Sands of Egypt have yielded countless treasures, and in this video, we showcase some of the most remarkable finds that have shed light on this ancient civilization. So put on your sunblock and sun hats as we sit through the desert sands and learn about these amazing Egyptian discoveries. Severed Hands Archaeologists digging around a palace in the ancient Egyptian city of Avaris found something truly disturbing. In four separate pits, they found the remains of 16 human hands. But here's what's interesting. All the hands found were right hands, with their left counterparts nowhere to be found. The hands dated back to 3,600 years ago, a time when ancient people called the Hiskos made their capital at Avaris. Their kingdom controlled a small part of Egypt during that time, and it's pretty obvious to archaeologists that it was the Hiskos royalty that was responsible for these gruesome burials, as they were the monarchs at the time. Two of the hands were even found in separate pits in the palace throne room, but why just right hands, though? Well, you see, ancient Egyptian art and writing tells of a disturbing practice by soldiers. It involves soldiers cutting off the right hand of their vanquished foes and exchanging them for money as payment for their bravery and aptitude in the battle, I suppose. This discovery seems to be physical proof of the hand exchange being practiced, at least. It's not all about money, though. In ancient Egyptian culture, the right hand symbolizes power and strength, and cutting off the right hand of a vanquished enemy ensures that he had neither of the two even in the afterlife. Talk about kicking a man when he's down, am I right? Ancient Selfies In Philadelphia, the ancient Egyptian city, uh, not the one in Pennsylvania, archaeologists found what many people consider the ultimate form of vanity, selfies. No, no, they didn't have smartphones back then, so to those wearing tinfoil hats, just hold on to your horses, okay? I'm talking about portraits, but not just ordinary portraits. These old grave significance. They were found alongside ancient Egyptian mummies, and the portraits were supposed to represent the deceased while they were living. And represent they certainly did, as these portraits were stunningly lifelike. Not bad for selfies thought to be between 1800 to 2000 years old. All the portraits found were probably painted by artists in Alexandria, and having one buried next to you reflects on your social status at the time. You see, having one commissioned for you is very expensive, and it was the only middle and upper classes that were able to afford this luxury. Now, this is a very significant discovery, as this was only the second time portraits like these were found, with the first being way back in the 1880s. All those are now in the hands of private collectors and museums, and command a ton of money when they go for sale. The Shrine of Decapitated Falcons. It's gonna be one of those scripts today, eh? Ancient Egypt had an affinity for falcons, apparently. One of their gods, Horus, was depicted in statues and artworks boarding a falcon head, and he wasn't a lesser god, either. He was the sun god, he was in the upper echelon of deities. Falcons even been mummified and treated with almost the same respect as pharaohs. In short, these birds were revered and that's why this next discovery left scientists scratching their heads. Archaeologists at a dig site of the ancient port of Baron Lake in the Red Sea found a shrine containing 15 falcons placed on a pedestal. Everything was dated to be around 1700 years old. This would have been a pretty normal discovery if it weren't for a few shocking details. In the shrine was a monument depicting a child god and two unknown gods, as well as a harpoon. And by the way, all 15 falcons were headless, and to add to that weirdness of it all, there was also a Greek inscription forbidding boiling heads in the shrine, and of course, no one knew what that meant. The discovery was baffling, but it did confirm one thing. Egyptian religion was alive and well in the Roman Empire, despite the rise of Christianity. Golden City of Aten no one knows when the ancient city of Aten was abandoned and subsequently swallowed up by the desert sands, but what we do know is that it was a significant city during its time. The city was built during the reign of Pharaoh Amenhotep III and has been lost for a few millennia. That was until 2022 when it was found buried in the sands of Luxor. Judging by its size alone, Aten was a very prosperous city. It's the largest ancient city to have ever been found in Egypt. Since it was rediscovered, countless precious artifacts have been unearthed, which include pottery, numerous pieces of jewelry, as well as amulets and the likeness of scarab beetles. People have been calling the finding of Aten to be the most significant archaeological find since the discovery of King Tut's tomb. A discovery of this magnitude makes you wonder how many other secrets the deserts of Egypt are hiding from us. Khufu's Secret Tunnel Gotta hand it to the person or people who designed Pharaoh Khufu's most enduring legacy, the Great Pyramid of Giza. Found in the Giza Plateau in Egypt, this monument and monuments has stood for thousands of years and has been the source of much speculation and conspiracy theories. It stands there for all to see while hiding hundreds, perhaps even thousands of secrets at the same time. However, modern archaeological techniques have started to tear down the pyramid stones one by one, not literally, of course. All this to reveal some of the mysteries the pyramid has been hiding. One such secret has been Khufu's Secret Tunnel, a 30-foot-long, 7-foot-wide corridor hidden just above the main entrance of the Great Pyramid. 
It was detected in 2016 using scientific equipment that analyzes the changes in densities inside the pyramid. However, it wasn't until 2019 when actual footage inside the tunnel was filmed confirming its existence. By using an endoscope, archaeologists were finally able to see what was inside the tunnel and found absolutely nothing. To you and me, it's a bit anticlimactic, but to experts it opens up a whole new world of possibilities. The tunnel might be there for purely structural reasons, or it might lead to another never-before-seen chamber. Honestly, who knows? The tunnel might even be the key to finding out once and for all whether the mummy of Pharaoh Khufu still rests inside the pyramid. The road to this is Lost Labyrinth. Long ago, ancient Greek historian Herodotus described a magnificent place made up of a complex of buildings in a city with a pyramid. He further described this place as a wonder to behold and a true marvel of art and architecture. What's described here is what Herodotus called the Labyrinth. Thing is, without any physical remains, the existence of the Labyrinth has long been thought to be just a legend. That was until 2008 when archaeologists digging around with remains of the Black Pyramid of Anamahat III in Dashur, Egypt, found the remains of a vast complex which they think might be Herodotus' basis for the labyrinth. The place is said to be massive, comprising 12 courts and 3,000 plus rooms. There's also said to be two separate chambers, one above ground and the other underground. It's still too early to say that this place really was the labyrinth of lore, but on the flip side, it's also too early to say that it isn't. The Unfinished Obelisk Egyptians are famed for building massive structures that would remain structures that would stand for thousands of years. Who knew that the same longevity also applies to things they left unfinished? The Egyptian city of Aswan was the source of ancient Egypt's finest granite. Naturally, several ancient stone quarries can be found in the city. In one of those quarries lies one of history's greatest what-ifs. Here can be found what is called the Unfinished Obelisk, a massive slab of granite that, if it ever was erected, would have stood an outstanding 42 meters tall. In comparison, the largest completed obelisk, which now stands in Rome, Italy, is a full 10 meters shorter. Why was it left on the ground, I hear you ask? Well, you see, it had a lot of issues. Visible cracks were running all over the granite, making the structure weak and prone to collapse. Despite being unfinished, the obelisk has been a wealth of knowledge, allowing researchers a rare look into how ancient Egyptian stonemasons perfected their craft. Mummies with Golden Tongues What happens to us after we die is not a question that we're going to be answering today. Hey, I'm not even going to dare state an opinion on that. However, if you lived in ancient Egypt, it seems that for you to enter the afterlife, you'd have to plead your case of the god Osiris. Pretty weird, right? Well, let me explain. Recently, archaeologists unearthed several weird mummies from the necropolis at Uzwina, Egypt. Weird because these mummies had had their tongues pulled out during the embalming process and replaced with tongues made of gold. This isn't the first time, though. Similar golden tongue mummies have been found at Tapasiris Magna near Alexandria in 2021. It's believed that the Golden Tongues are there to help the dead speak with Osiris, who was the god of the afterlife. And what would they talk about? Well, apparently the dead present various reasons as to why they should be allowed to enter the afterlife. And if Osiris finds you unworthy, well, let's just say that you'll never be granted eternal life. So, if you think there's some truth to this, maybe you should have your Golden Tongue made as early as today. Tomb of the Unknown Queen Saqqara has long been a place where Egyptologists have made many amazing discoveries. More often than not, when a mummy is found there, researchers will be able to find out who that mummy was and his or her significance in ancient Egyptian culture. Notice that I said more often than not, and not all the time. On the 100th anniversary of the finding of King Tut's tomb, another equally important discovery was made. Aside from unearthing the tombs of many who were believed to be King Tut's closest advisors and generals, they also found a pyramid. In it were several coffins and mummies, as well as gold and other things that you would expect to find in a royal Egyptian tomb. The pyramid was to commemorate Queen Nyth. Problem is, even the most knowledgeable of experts didn't know who Queen Nyth was. She's never appeared in any historical records or documents. This discovery has the potential to change the history books, but that'll only happen if Egyptologists figure out who this unknown queen was. For now, you can see some of the artifacts gathered in this expedition at the Grand Egyptian Museum. The Rosetta Stone Pretty sure you've heard about the Rosetta Stone. In a nutshell, it's a slab of rock where three different texts were written. Hieroglyphic, Demotic, as well as Ancient Greek. But what you might not know is that it's also one of the most important discoveries ever made, and it was found in Egypt. The stone is the key used to decipher ancient Egyptian scripts. You see, what was written there was the same text, just written in three different versions. The text was a decree issued back in 196 BC in Memphis, Egypt, but the exact content of the text isn't important there. Before the Rosetta Stone, no one knew how to read ancient Egyptian texts. When scientists finally realized what was on the stone, and since they already knew ancient Greek, they finally had the key to crack the Egyptian hieroglyphic code. So if it wasn't for the stone's discovery, I wouldn't be here telling you guys all about the fascinating Egyptian discoveries in this video. 
or to subscribe. See you all next time.